Back in early spring, Zoomed Labs reached out and asked if I wanted to collaborate on a video with them. And I said yes. And they were kind enough to send me out the Zoomed Double Door Paladaria because I had been wanting to make kind of a showcase enclosure in my lobby. Something to greet people when they walk in. They also sent me some supplies to get this Paladarium up and running, including the Zoomed Paladarium Heater 100, the Paladarium Filter 20, the Paladarium Hood, and the Paladarium UV and Plant Growth Lighting Kit. I also ordered some cork bark, branches, tropical plants, pillow moss and sphagnum moss and rocks and whatever lights that I needed and, and anything else that I needed for this Paladarium. And then right before I started working on the background for this enclosure, I got a message from Herp Havoc and they offered to bring me out a custom made background just for this setup. Just had a visitor stop by the Tarantula Collective. This is Cody. As you can see by his shirt, he is from Herp Havoc. I build custom reptile enclosures. I like doing tarantula enclosures, reptile enclosures, dark frog enclosures. I've been working on this really cool one for Richard. We're gonna be putting it in this 36 by 36 by Zoomed. I hand carve everything that I do. I hand paint everything and I try to sculpt it out for that ultra realistic look. We're gonna be attaching 100% silicone around the perimeter of it. Make sure it stays stuck, snug in there and it doesn't get any water going back behind there. And Set up. So now you're just gonna slide it in there. We took the doors off the enclosure, so that hopefully that'll help. And that's something I like about these Zoomed enclosures. It seems like the doors come off relatively easy so I can get to everything. Because I went out and bought one of these myself to make sure that this fit me. <laughs> <laughs> that's customer service right there, man. So I wanted to check it out myself. I feel like the anticipation's been building. Nobody's seen what it looks like yet. Oh, there it is. That looks like rock. That is so amazing. It's but got, wait, there's more. It's got cool little moss on it. All right, let's 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 finish it up before I start gushing. The nice thing about this background that he made for me, it's got a backside and then a side side, which I'm sure there's a better explanation, but it's kind of cool. It's like a wraparound background. Blocking my own shots here. That's the... Uh, Taekwondo studio across the hall. <laughs> Dude, that looks so epic. You can see I try making it all flow. It'd be one yeah. solid piece. Like the way the rock formations are, like they just kind of looks extremely natural. And like you can't even tell they're two separate pieces. That is awesome, dude. She says she doesn't want to be on camera. She keeps talking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll cut it out. <laughs> All the detailing that you see, I airbrush pretty much everything on it. And what I can't airbrush, I paint by hand. I had these planters in. I drove drainage holes so your plants don't get any root rot. There, there'll be no sitting water. That's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to plant stuff in there. So uh, I, it, it's good as far as like if I have a misting system hooked up to it, not gonna cause any problems. Nope, not at all. Everything's fully waterproof. Uh, this can actually be submerged in water without causing any issues. You could fill this up to here. With oh wow! Water. Which is good because it goes all the way down to the bottom, and. We're gonna be filling it up with some water. So yeah, that'll be awesome. And if I had a heat light on there, like a heat lamp's not gonna cause any problems. Nope, not at all. So if somebody was, you know, they really like this, they wanna get one for themselves, how do they get in contact with you? Best way would be Facebook or Instagram, at Kurt Havoc. I also have an Etsy store set up and you can email me for larger custom orders. One thing I noticed even was right up here, you even cut out a little spot specifically for like the cross section of the top of the enclosure. Even the name brand backdrops that you get don't have that kind of attention to detail. <laughs> All right, man, well, thank you so much for it. I really appreciate it. Not a problem, um, thank you, Richard. I, I had a lot of fun. This is awesome seeing your shop. <laughs> I, I'm actually here too. <laughs> we'll turn this around. There we go. So now we both can see. Man, you're so much darker than I am. <laughs> no, still look like a white. Well, you can't see. I'm really white on camera. But thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Not that a problem. Awesome. Shake my left hand. That's really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Not how that works. But yeah, this is cool. I'm excited. This is going to be cool. So thank you. Not a problem, man. After a few weeks of letting the background cure and really make sure it was set in place, I went ahead and started hardscaping and getting the aquarium section of this paludarium up and running. I used the rocks and some aquarium foam to make a land area in the corner, planted some pothos and other tropical plants, siliconed in all of the cross branches. I also added some bromeliads and climbing vines and let everything sit for a few weeks to get settled and let the plants really get rooted. 
and I also filled up the bottom with water. Once the water stabilized, it was ready for its first inhabitants. So I brought in some cherry shrimp of a whole variety of colors. There's blue ones and red ones and yellow ones and green ones and red and white ones. And I mean, it's, it was a nice little mix of about 20 of them. And I set them up a little breeding quarter off in the back where they could lay their eggs and, and, and do what they needed to do there. And then I added some fish. Started off with a Pletco. and then some neon tetras and black lion tetras. Then I added two black mollies and two gold dust mollies. And then about a week later, I introduced a couple of African frogs. Now the entire purpose of setting up this enclosure, as I mentioned earlier, was to kind of have a showcase piece in the lobby anytime a new visitor would stop by. I wanted something that was gonna be beautiful, really highlight the elegance and beauty of nature, kind of a rainforest setting, showcase some very awesome, beautiful animals that would really catch people's eyes and maybe belay any fear that they had stepping in here thinking there was just gonna be spiders everywhere. And I looked at a whole bunch of different species that I considered putting in this enclosure. I even asked a lot of you all for some suggestions. And after some time I narrowed it down to two different species I was going back and forth on. So I decided to look into where I could get them, how much they were going to be, things like that. And unfortunately I wasn't really able to easily get a hold of either of those species. Every expo I went to this summer I was looking for these reptiles and I couldn't find them so I really decided to kind of go back to the drawing board and, and try to figure out a different route to take. And going over the list of what I was looking for in the animal to keep in this paludarium, I realized that what I was looking for was actually what I already have. One of my favorite geckos, in fact, probably one of my favorite animals that I have here in the collective is my giant day gecko. It's just very beautiful and fun to look at and adorable and I don't know, it just, it just hits a lot of boxes for me. So I decided instead of getting a new animal to go in there, I was just gonna upgrade my giant day gecko. And in doing research on community communal species for paludarium enclosures like this, I saw a lot of positive reports of people housing day geckos and red-eyed tree frogs together and not having any problems. And I'd been wanting to update my red-eyed tree frogs enclosure for some time now, so this seemed like a good opportunity. So after letting Marcy, my giant day gecko, settle in, I went ahead and moved in the red-eyed tree frog. And I kept a very close eye on them for the first few days. Now they keep different schedules. The day gecko's out moving around during the day and sleeps at night, while the red-eyed tree frog sleeps during the day and then is out moving around at night. So there was no issues keeping them together. Together. It's been a few months now, the plants are doing really well, the animals are doing well. I did lose a few African frogs, I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but they still got one swimming around. Fish are breeding, there's tiny little babies everywhere, the shrimp are starting to breed, which is very exciting. And it's actually kind of become a detrimental thing for me to have in some ways, because uh, I spend way too much time just sitting in front of this enclosure, watching all the life move around. I wanted to give you a quick tour of the Zoomed Paludarium setup here. So we got the double doors and we will open that up here. Usually the day gecko is hanging out on the glass. As you can see, it kind of kind of poops on it some. Uh, but she is back there kind of hanging out. She really enjoys this branch. This cord branch runs all the way across. Uh, we've got the BioDudes fluorescent grow light here. Uh, this is the Zoomed. Uh, is a UVB light, which is right underneath this bar here, so she gets plenty of good UVB. I've got a deep heat emitter right here, kind of goes to the basking spot, and it is on a thermostat, so it controls the heat. Uh, then over here, I've got that other Zoomed uh, light, and it has a uh, BioDude LED light. I'm afraid it will be way too bright. So it's got a grow LED right here and then another UVB light, uh, which works out very well. So no matter where it is, whether the frog or the, the gecko is in the enclosure, it's getting a good amount of UVB light. We got this cool little leaf shaped watering dish. 
I got the uh, ledge here for the gecko food. I got that from the bio dude also. Got another little branch, it's kind of a cork park branch hanging out. Uh, it's got, it's kind of a, got a little hidey hole back in here. I don't know if you can see it, but a nice little dark spot for the gecko or the frog to kind of hide out. Uh, so you can't, you know, you can get away, find some cover. We got another one back here, the gecko likes to kind of hang out down in there sometimes. It's kind of made its own little cave. It burrows itself up underneath here into that moss, which is kind of cool. Uh, down here, we've got like another little kind of place for them to hang out, uh, have some cover be, you know, nice and secure. It's also got a little damp, got some moss growing there. Some of the pothos is uh, kind of rooted in there. And then over here, we've got one bromeliad. Uh, we got two bromeliads, three bromeliads, four. And then we got a little one shooting off over here. So technically we got five. And then this cool little kind of bromeliad light plant. I don't know if it's some kind of fern or something I got from the bio dude. And then in here, I've got pothos that's planted over here, but it's kind of grown its way and it's worked its way along this cork bark and now is through the, the enclosures, which is kind of neat. Uh, we got some duckweed in there, obviously. We got some water lettuce. The Zoomed filter is back down in here. We got some of the rocks and this goes all the way down to the bottom where it's actually opened up. Well, you can't really see it very well. So that's all opened up uh, down here at the bottom so the fish can actually swim up in here with a shrimp or anything like that. And there's a little bit of a hole right here. So deep enough water for the shrimp to kind of get through as well as the, the smaller fish. They can swim right out through there. So a cool little hiding spot for them as well. Some of the growing vines, uh, they're not doing too well. I had a whole bunch growing up over here and then they end up dying. I think the roots got waterlogged or something. So I'm mean, keeping the water level a little bit lower. Uh, over here, we've got the heater, keeping everything nice and warm as well as an aerator. So the water's plenty oxygenated. And then we got all of the cool animals. And you're probably asking, well, where's the tree frog? Uh, Cause I've talked a lot about this cool tree frog and she is always hiding out under a leaf. So she's here, she's saying, and now she's sleeping. So we're just gonna let her be. But yeah, this is the paludarium. This is the Zoomed enclosure that I got all built out. Animals are loving it and thriving. And I really enjoy this. And I mean, if, if you can afford to have one of these in your house, you got the space for it. You got the time to take care of them. It's very cool. And it's the first thing people see. They walk in the door, you know, they uh, they come in, they see, well, it's kind of a mess right now. <laughs> they see the, the lobby, they look over, and then right here is the paludarium. And if you go through, you are in the Tarantula Collective. So it's a, it's a cool little thing to, to see, you know, right before you kind of move in on your own. Ooh, something's creepy going on over here. I got a light flashing with my voice. <laughs> I thought I turned it off. That's not good, let's turn this off. It seems like no matter where you look, there's something happening. There's an isopod crawling up a plant or crawling across the cork, the dead geckos moving around, the tree frogs waking up, fish are swimming, shrimp are dancing. I mean, it's it's amazing. It's better than watching TV. So I wanna say thank you to Zoomed Labs for sending out all these cool products and that amazing enclosure. I'll have links down below in the description so you can see exactly which enclosure this is. And if you wanna pick up any of the bioactive supplies that I used in this build, I'll have a link down below for the bio dude. And they just gave me a new affiliate code. So if you use the code tarantula12 at checkout, it's gonna save you 12% off your entire purchase. I'll be making a lot more videos over the next few years about this paludarium enclosure and its inhabitants. So make sure you subscribe and like this video so you don't miss the newer videos coming out later on down the line. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>